Why is the rate of depression in Africa right. lower than the rates in Europe and, and America? And the, the rate of depression in Africa is lower, and that, that's really an easy one. They're not under the same social, economic, and political pressures as we are. They're under different sets of pressures in economic, political, and social. But one of the things they don't have to how do you say, respond to or explain to anyone that they're Africans. If I live in Jamaica, I say I'm a Jamaican, but then I've got to somehow figure out a way to let that mean I'm an African too. When I'm in America, we used to call ourselves Negro and colors, and then we decide to start calling ourselves Afro-Americans and then African-Americans as a way of saying, I'm not an American holy, America is a geopolitical place. I'm an African holy, that's a racial space. That's a culture space, that's a spiritual space. And so, but on the continent, you don't have to say that because you're in your geopolitical space, you're in your culture space, you're in your racial space. You don't have to explain that to yourself. Here, we've got to explain it to ourselves because there's another culture space here. There's another political space here. There's another racial space here that's not African. So, and we're trying to function within that space with the other space being the dominant factor. And so we're constantly under duress, stress, and pressure to perform in a partnership that one of the partners won't allow to be legitimate. And yet we're fighting constantly for that legitimacy, that human beingness legitimacy in the context of a social order and a social ecology that's being determined not by the two parties but by one party. And it's putting us under a lot of stress because the other party who's making the determination is then telling us why aren't you self-determining? While at the same time he's got the power to make the decisions of the degree of your determinations that can be made. You don't have to do that on the continent. You know, you wake up in the morning, you smell Africa, you hear Africa, you taste Africa, you speak Africa, you go and look at your door and you see Africa. And you have a rhythm with nature that Africa has designed. Over here we have a rhythm with nature that an abusive, oppressive, backwards, ignorant, non-civilized person have designed. And we are forced to try to be human within the context of that. That's very hard to do. And it puts you under a lot of stress every day here, the UK, Germany, France, wherever we find our people. And I know like the, the older I get and the more I learn about my body, I know people speak about eating a lot. They speak about being active. But I don't mm. think enough focus is put on being mentally healthy or how being mentally unhealthy can destroy your body. Mm -hmm. and I think that's what a lot of brothers and sisters are suffering from. Just being mentally unhealthy. Mentally very unhealthy because we're, the body. we're not in a culture that emphasized mental health. Matter of fact, we're in a culture that ostracized those who they recognize to be mentally unhealthy instead of trying to create a process to heal those who are mentally unhealthy. And nor do we have in place instruments to avoid the mental unhealthiness. We've created a medicine, a medical practice around mental health that has to do with medicating and not mitigating. See, to mitigate is to find methodology to, to solve or to solve the problem or to remove the things that's causing the mental distress. But instead we give medicine that, that how do you say, covers, um, masks the mental distress, but not the cause of the mental distress. And, and it gets replicated, replicated, replicated in everyday activity in the society we're in. And so people in America, most of us are mentally ill. It's a culture that allows for mental illness to be a dominant factor because it's so much easier to rule the masses that are mentally dysfunctional. Even at the level where you think your dysfunction is normal in America, you may find mentally you're very unhealthy. 
we are so unhealthy, we don't even know how to eat good food. Go in and look in the supermarket and read the packets of what we eat every day. It is poison, 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 obvious poison. Toxins, 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 obvious toxins, and yet we race in and buy it every day. Buy it every day, ingest it every day, without thinking about it. Just that. In the African sacred science system, the body is the temple in which God the divine must live and reside. So then it should be the foundational institution to be kept healthy. One cannot say I'm spiritually healthy if the physical body is not healthy. But we're in a culture that says you can say I'm spiritually healthy even if your physical body is, is crippled and you can at the same time be constantly crippling it with alcohol, with tobacco, with bad food, with toxins, and you'll still praise the spiritual being that you're putting this into this contaminated toxic temple and asking it to function. So it must become a, a distortion of its own self in order to function outside of that toxic, distorted temple that it's housed in. And when you articulate it, when you try to use words to describe yourself or it, we avoid using words that will identify the contaminant or identify the toxin or identify the negative action because the ruling elite that's imposing that as the cultural social order will not allow for you to go and punish if you try to do that.